Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to some Anderson basketball. We've got the Trojans round three playoffs coming up for you right here on Vipe. Due to some UIL restrictions, we are not able to uh, have video broadcast, but we've got uh, a, a, excuse me, live audio for you coming up right now. Jack Farrell here joining you as I have all season throughout uh, this run of Trojan basketball. Anderson entering, looking for their first quarterfinal win uh, since they began this, this streak of playoff runs back two seasons ago. Back in 2020, they lost in the quarterfinal round to Brandeis. The year before, they lost in the third round, the quarterfinal round to Hendrickson. And here tonight, they look to break that streak where they will be taking on the Weiss Wolves winners of their district, the Trojans winners of their own as well. The Wolves enter tonight's game at 25 and 12. They were 12 and two in district play. That was enough to get them a district championship. And the Wolves are an excellent team. They're very athletic. They've got guys that can shoot. They've got some size inside. Anderson entering, of course, at 29 and eight, going 14 and 0 in district play. They went two and 0. Or excuse me, they went 14 and 0 the previous year as well. But we are just five minutes away from getting started here. Got the KXAN crew in the building as well. Going to be on KBVO if you want. If you're in the Austin area, but if not, if you want to stick with the Anderson broadcast, we've got it right here. Going to try and be as partial as I can throughout the playoff game, of course. But this is a Weiss team that's been very hot. They finished their season very strong. They enter, as we said, at 25 and 12. Anderson at 29 and 8. The winner will play the winner of Beaumont United and Goose Creek. If you remember back in December during the Anderson Classic, the Trojans took on Goose Creek, but they were shorthanded. They did lose that game but without starting center Nate Langley, who has proved himself to be an absolutely massive part. Absolutely massive part. Of this, uh, of this Anderson team and this Anderson offense. Nate been the leading scorer for the Trojans uh, in these two playoff games, scoring 16 and 15 respectively, and was it just absolutely huge down the stretch against New Caney uh, last Friday in Bryan. Nate missed the front end of a one and one, but a New Caney fan was caught using a noisemaker, which led Nate to, to get another shot at his free throw, where he knocked down the front end and then the back end as well. So that was a huge swing for Anderson ultimately. It was a big part of why they were able to come out and get a victory in that game. The Trojans are gonna need to, to limit the turnovers uh, if they are going to want to continue on in the playoffs here. But three minutes of pregame left. Anderson playing on Monday night usually they have been on Tuesdays. The winner will go on, as I said, to play either Goose Creek or Beaumont United. The winner of that one, however, has uh, will not be decided until tomorrow evening. That one is going to be at 7 p.m. tomorrow. And then afterwards, the next game will be played at March 4th at 8 p.m. Probably in the Houston area would be my guess, considering the proximities of these two teams. So we do have a time slot set. Whoever wins here will be playing on Friday at 8 p.m., but we are not there yet. We've still got a whole lot that's going to need to happen before that. We've got 32 minutes of basketball coming up for you in just a moment. Both teams out there getting warm, getting some shots up. Anderson going to need a little bit more from their point guard, Mike Wagner. He had six in the last game, but he really struggled holding on to the ball. And when you're the setup man for the entire offense and and you can't, uh, you can't keep the ball under control. That's going to be a recipe for disaster. But Anderson, good enough defensively and uh, was able to pick up the slack elsewhere and picked up the victory against an excellent new Caney team. But now, just 90 seconds before getting to the start of this one, both teams headed over to the bench. This is a full house in here this evening. As both teams now heading over to the bench, we will throw it down to the uh, PA here in just a moment. But right now, Anderson going to continue to rock with the same starting lineup. Mitchell Whitlow, Jack Francis, 
Mike Wagner, Nate Langley, and Bennett Blackerby. We'll see what Weiss comes out with. Anderson, technically uh, speaking, is the home team. Of course, we are at a neutral site. We are at Rouse High School here in Leander. Anderson wearing their white uniforms with the gold and blue accents. Weiss wearing their gray uniforms with maroon accents. A white Weiss across the chest, white numbers. And here we go. Gymnasium for tonight's 5A Region 3 Area Championship game between the Anderson Trojans and the Weiss Rose. Before we announce the starting lineups, we would like to remind you that this evening's contest will be conducted according to the rules established by the UIL. The officials for tonight's game have been selected with the consent of both participating schools and the ruling should be respected by all. We invite and encourage you to cheer and be vocal in support of your team. However, in order to maintain an atmosphere of good sportsmanship, foul and abusive language or actions directed towards players, coaches, officials, or other spectators will not be tolerated. Your cooperation in this matter is greatly appreciated we hope you enjoy the game. We ask that everyone will please stand. We ask for gentlemen to please remove your hats for our national anthem.
Alrighty, we are back into it. Pre-game taken care of. And you know what that means. Game. Big number 34, Cameron Jackson, going to be the one to run the tip. Nate Langley, of course, in it for the Trojans. Titus Massaquai starting for the Wolves. Tyson Wybrew as well, number 5, DK. And back, number 2, Corey Penson. And the tip won by the bigger man. And Weiss has it the other way. It's Massaquai. So the Wolves will start with possession, which means the Trojans will start with the possession arrow. Here comes Penson around the perimeter. He gets it back to Massaquai. Now on to the left side. That's Wybrew. Wybrew taking it right at Whitlow. Good defense from Anderson staying straight up. Langley gets the rebound. And Anderson gets a stop on its first possession. And here comes Wagner. Wagner. Letting the offense develop. Gets it up to Whitlow at the top of the key. Whitlow hands it back to Wagner. He'll come around the right. Takes the screen from Langley. Now kills his dribble back on the wing. Gets it back to Whitlow near half court. And back to Wagner on the right side. Wagner going to drive in. Kicks to Francis. Francis facing up with number 15, Wybrew defending. Now back to Wagner in the corner. Back for Jack. Jack crossing over. Takes the screen from Whitlow. Now back outside for Wagner. Jack once again with it into Whitlow. Mitchell going to put one dribble on the court. Back out for Wagner. Wagner going to step into the triple. That's too strong. Rebound goes high to number 34, Cameron Jackson, and the Wolves clear it the other way. Here comes Penson. Stops on the left wing. Black will be going to pick up. If you're just joining us, due to some UIL restrictions, couldn't get a uh, live video broadcast, but we do have, of course, audio. Francis gets the steal on the left wing. Lob up ahead to him. He's got a two-on-one. Jack can't time the layup. Blackerby has it knocked away. Now chase down for the loose ball. Whitlow dives to the floor, and it's going to be a foul going against Mitchell. Chidebum DK was the wolf in on the play, and DK will be the one to take it inbound. So the first foul of the game goes against the Anderson Trojans and Mitchell Whitlow. That's his first. Now here's Massaquai on the left wing. He's going to drive into the paint, dishes it off, and we have a dunk inside by Tyson Wybrew. So the Wolves strike first. It's an inside slam for Wybrew. So this is a uh, much more size in the front court than Anderson has dealt with all season. You're going to have to play solid defense and limit them to one shot. Langley drives in, throws up a wild shot. It's no good. Wybrew with the rebound. Here come the Wolves. Two minutes gone. It's 2 nothing. Weiss. Now back outside for DK. Francis defending. Gets up in his face. Now it dishes it off to Jackson. Jackson run off the block. Whitlow tips it away and gets the steal. So pushing it ahead to Langley. Now Langley up the left side of the court. Back to Whitlow. 5.52 remains here in the first quarter as Mike Wagner now at the top of the key. Running the show for the Trojans. Dishes it off to Langley. Pass fake to Francis. And now back outside. Wagner to Blackerby. Anderson really going to try and slow this game down. Now back to Whitlow, uh, shot fake, gets it into Blackerby on the elbow. He's going to take it right at the big man. Gets around him, but that's another missed layup. Weiss's size affecting Anderson at the basket here. They're 0 for 2 at the cup. Now five and a half to play. Back outside for Massaquai. He's calling out a play. They're really just trying to get it into either Jackson or Wybrew. But now they kick it back up for Penson. Penson to Massaquai. 
right in front of the Trojan bench on the right side. Massaquai driving in. The screen comes from Jackson. Jackson rolls to the basket, but they kick it back out for DK. Blackerby defending. Still 2-0, three minutes gone in the game. Now Blackerby gets it in. That's Wybrew, who has the only two points. He faces up on Whitlow. Mitchell forces it back outside to Massaquai. Now here's Penson. Francis defending. Is Anderson doing a good job fronting these big men, making it difficult for Weiss to get these entry passes? But now screen comes Francis chasing Penson around the perimeter. Massaquai trying to get it into Wybrew. Whitlow doing an excellent job fronting the bigger uh, offensive player. They get it inside for Jackson. Jackson strong to the basket. Ball tapped around and into the hands of Blackerby. Bennett loses it on the court. He recovers back to Wagner. Wagner now pushing the pace for the Trojans. Mike going to take it all the way. He takes contact. Gets it to go. No call. But he sent Jackson to the floor. So the Trojans open up their scoring with Mike Wagner. Nearly four minutes into the game, 4-12 remain here in the first quarter. We've got two apiece at Rouse High School. Now DK with it back outside. Switch back onto Langley. Whitlow dives back under the basket. Here's Wybrew into the corner. Now back to Jackson underneath. He's doubled. Loses it into the hands of Blackerby. Bennett going to push now for the Trojans. He doesn't have numbers, but he crosses to his left. Pulls inside. Tried to force it to Whitlow, and that's going to be a steal. Wybrew got his hand on it. Now 3.50 remaining, and here come the Wolves. Penson up ahead. Now DK going to pull up for three. That's good. Today, boom, DK knocks down the first outside shot of the game for either team, and it's 5-2 to two in favor of Weiss. 3.36 left in the first. Wagner back to Jack Francis. Jack going to try and answer, and he can't do it. Rebound goes, though, to Whitlow. So Anderson retains possession, zips it back out for Jack. Jack going to drive to the paint. He's cut off, now trapped into the corner. Back for Langley. Langley gets it for Whitlow. Mitchell above the break three, knocks it down. So the playoff offense from Mitlow continues to pour on as he has three in the opening quarter now, coming off a game in which he had nine. Three minutes remain. Fred Dale getting ready to check in for the Trojans. Lorenzo Diggs getting ready to check in for the Wolves. That will be our first substitutions for either team. And now killing his dribble out on the perimeter is Penson. He zips it off to Massacoy. Under three to play. The Wolves have it. Low scoring game early, and we figured that that would be the case. Now here's Penson, back outside for DK. DK going to drive in at Wagner. Ooh, got away with a little bit of a push. Massacoy all the way to the cup, dishes it off to Jackson. That's going to be out of bounds, off of Jackson. Nate Langley doing a good job of staying in front. We now have our substitutions into the game now is going to be... Let me get my roster out. Yeah, we've got a we've got a little issue on our roster here. Just want to correct it. Number five is Jarmaine Mason. So five is not DK. It's Mason. We'll get that adjusted at the first break. But here's Wagner back across to Francis. Five apiece. Trojans have the ball. Dale into the game for Langley. Fred Dale, the Anderson Trojans quarterback. As here's Francis stepping back into the corner. He'll be killing his dribble there. He gets it back outside for Whitlow. Two minutes remain. Black will be going to dribble into a three. He pulls up, knocks it down. That's the second three of the quarter for Anderson. Bennett Blackerby with his first make, and that's a good thing to see for the Trojans. To see Blackerby coming up and hitting on his first attempt of the game. Two minutes to go here in the first. Anderson leads it 8-5. to five. Now around, that's number three, Torrey Simmons. Simmons being hounded by Blackerby. They get it into Wybrew. Whitlow, the much smaller player defending. Mitch got, uh, he bit on the, the shot fake, and that's going to be Whitlow's second foul. So now we've got our roster corrected. Jarmaine Mason, number five. DK, number four. Haven't seen him yet. Now they lob it in. Mason is the one on the inbound. So Jarmaine Mason hitting the three. He's got three. Wybrew has two. Minute 40 left as there's Mason on the perimeter. He'll drive right at Dale. Anderson doing a good job staying in front. And that's going to be a foul on the floor on the rebound. So right now, Weiss getting the benefit of the whistle in the first quarter. Three te uh, yes, three team fouls for Anderson. None so far for Weiss. 130 left in the first quarter. It'll be Mason on the inbound. Looking for somewhere to go. He just passes it out to the safety outlet in Penson. Now driving in is Diggs. His first touch. He zips it back out for Simmons. He'll drive in on Blackerby. Blackerby goes straight up. Wybrew taps it out, but it's right into the hands of Langley. And that will be the first foul of the game going against Weiss on the loose ball. It'll be Lorenzo Diggs who's off the bench.
120 left in the first. Anderson leads it by three. They have possession. Mike Wagner, the one with the ball for Anderson. He zips it to Blackerby. He'll come up shooting again. Two for two, Bennett Blackerby. Two shots, two makes, both of them triples for Bennett Blackerby. Anderson has an 11-5 lead. And now here comes Weiss the other way. Up top with it is Penson. Penson back to Wybrew. They're looking inside. They find it to Diggs. Dale defending. A good spin from Diggs. Can't get the shot to fall. Rebound to Jack Francis. He had to look right at the basket, but he couldn't get it to fall on the much smaller defender, Fred Dale. Now skips it over to Francis. Under 40 seconds to play, and Anderson likes to hold for the final shot. It's a hot start for the Trojans after a, a well, <laughs> a hot end of the quarter after a slow start to the quarter. Not a lot of offense here. The Anderson Trojans lead it 11-5. Now under 30 seconds to play. They're holding for the final shot. Jack Francis, last year's Centex Defensive Player of the Year. Definitely uh, the regular season leading scorer for the Trojans, but in the playoffs, they've gone to Langley a whole lot. Now Francis hands it off to Wagner. 13 to play. Back to Francis. Now under 10, Francis will go to work. Simmons up to defend him. Jack crosses to his left, crosses to his right, back to the left, gets around the defender, and will have a foul on the floor, and they're going to get a little hand check on Tory Simmons, who is defending Jack Francis. They'll get Whitlow back into the game as Mitchell picked up two fouls here in the first quarter. So they'll keep Mitchell in for the offensive possession like his three ball more than they like Dale's. So it's the starters back in to end the quarter for the Anderson Trojans. 3.7 left. Blackaby gets it into Francis. Jack loses it. And now Weiss will have a chance at the buzzer. And he did get it off, but he missed the layup. He got all the way to the cup and just blew a tire a little bit. Massaquai could not get the shot to fall. So after one, Anderson leads it 11-5. to We're going to go ahead and take our first break on the broadcast. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to some UIL playoffs on Vibe Live. We'll be right back. What does the 50th anniversary of Title IX mean? It means I'm valued, I'm empowered, I can do anything. It means I'll pave the way for every girl who plays high school sports in the future, just like every female student, coach, official, and administrator blazed the trail for me. Because every student deserves the opportunity to play. Encourage girls you know to participate in Texas high school sports. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Back in after one, the Anderson Trojans lead it 11 to five off the strength of two outside shots from Bennett Blackerby. He leads the Trojans with six, Mitchell Whitlow with three, Mike Wagner with two. So Anderson hit four baskets in the first quarter. All three of them were triples. For Weiss, Jermaine, excuse me, Jarmaine Mason, number five, knocking down a three. Tyson Wybrew got the first basket of the game. It was a dunk inside. And he's just the power forward. They've got a taller player in Cameron Jackson, but Anderson doing a good job mitigating the threat of Jackson so far. Campbell Duncan and Colin Page into the game for Anderson. So it's going to be Francis Blackerby, Duncan Langley, and Page, the five of the Trojans who are on offense. Skip across to Francis. He has it on the right side. Jack double coming. We'll get the Weiss to five once they've got the ball, and that's going to be a travel on Blackerby. Bennett didn't uh, should have gone to the jump stop. He chopped his feet a little bit for Weiss. It's the two big men, Jackson and Wybrew, out on the wing. They've got Mason, Penson, and Simmons. Simmons the one bringing it up as Colin Page, the UT football commit, is bringing it up. Here comes a double on the right side. They'll just have to throw it in, and that's going to be intercepted by Jack Francis. Jack lobs it to Page. Page waits, takes a big hit, and somersaults under the basket. Uh, looked like a hard foul, but Colin does uh, He flops around, not in a basketball sense, but in a... In a in a real life sense, he <laughs> just the way he moves his body is very uh, free flowing, and and I think that's part of the reason that foul looked so bad. But Page comes up with a little bit of Olympial head to the line, coming off a game in which he had a very clutch three down the stretch. But of course, that man is in for his defense as he misses the first free throw. So same five for each team. Now each with three team fouls as Page goes one for two. Puts the score at 12-5 as Anderson with some light press. Bringing it up is Simmons. Penson has it. He gets it back to Simmons, and they are across the uh, midcourt line. Back to Penson. 
He gets it to Simmons. Simmons up to the left side, driving in, hop step, dumps it off to Jackson, tries to save it, and Anderson lucky um, as Blackerby tried to save that, but it would have gone right to Jackson. It would have had a wide open shot at the basket. So Blackerby just getting the deflection, saving Anderson a potential bucket. Now here's Page inside. They get it to Wybrew, defending. Now back outside for Simmons. They're trying to get it into Jackson. The double comes. Jackson splits it, goes up with it, can't get it, gets the ball back, gets the lay-in. And that was just all size. Cameron Jackson just brute forced it. And he got the basket Weiss with a much-needed one. Francis over across to Langley, and that's going to be a turnover. Penson streaking into the front court. No one back for Anderson, and that's another deuce. So Weiss cutting it back to a two-point game. Corey Penson getting his first make of the game. Four Weiss makes all coming from different players as it's now 12-9. to nine. Francis with it. Anderson doing a better job mitigating the turnovers. They just turned it over there, though. As Blackaby nearly turns it over again. Goes behind the back, and it's stepped into a three. And you can't get that to go. Page on the board. Going to go up strong with it. Takes the bump. Gets it to go. Colin Page showing no fear inside against the much taller defenders. But he gets the deuce, and Anderson leads it by five once again. 6.15 remain in the half, and here come the Wolves. Anderson once again keeping the light press as Simmons back to Penson. Penson back to Simmons. Simmons on the left side, double coming from Duncan and Page. Now back for Penson. Penson driving in, kicks to the corner. Now firing again is Mason, and he's got his second triple of the game. Jarmaine Mason. Six points. Cuts the lead back down to two. It's 14 to 12, under six minutes to play here in the opening half. Uh, Blackerby, excuse me, back across to Francis. He's stuck in front of the Weiss bench. He'll dribble back. Now back across to Blackerby. Bennett driving in, steps to his left, zips it across for Page. Colin not going to attack the closeout. He'll just reset the O. Back for Francis. Fake into the corner for Langley. Jack still has it. Jack nearly had his pocket pick, but he gets around the defender. Going to dribble into the elbow. Knock down the jumper. Jack Francis with his first two. And he's got it from the left elbow. Anderson going to go ahead and call a timeout. And with five minutes, 20 seconds remaining here in half number one. Weiss trails it 16 to 12. We have a timeout on the floor, so we'll go ahead and take 30 seconds. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, back in another Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. What takes the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back at it. Dale into the game along with Wagner. So the five for the Trojans is Francis, Page, Duncan, Wagner, and Dale. For Weiss, it'll be Jackson along with Penson, Simmons, Wybrew, and I believe that's Mason. It is Mason. So Weiss really likes to, to stick with this lineup. Is now killing his dribble out on the perimeter is Simmons, but they get it back outside. It's at half court for Mason. Mason driving around Page, loses the ball. Colin getting up in his face. Uh, lucky Colin didn't get called for, a, for a, a little push off there. As now here is Simmons. Wagner picking him up. Four minutes, 50 seconds remain here in the half. As here comes Simmons to the right. Now he hands it off to Penson. Wagner recovers. Mike staying in front. Floaters no good. Jackson can't get the board. Wagner can. And the Trojans come with it the other way. Lob ahead. Campbell Duncan doesn't have the hands for it. And that'll be out of bounds. I like the idea for Mike Wagner. Just couldn't quit it right on the money. They're going to get Campbell Duncan out of the game in favor for Mitchell Whitlow right here. Mitchell, three points in the game. So these two winners of their districts, 17 for the Trojans, 18 for the Wolves, I believe. But now, with under four and a half to play, Wagner hits the floor hard, took a hit to the chest, but they get it inside for Jackson. Jackson just going to brute force it once again. That's back-to-back -back times. That's worked. He just kind of brings his body through the double team and gets a layup. That's pretty much impossible to defend if you're the Trojans. They're bringing the double, and it's a good double, too. And here's Whitlow back up top for Wagner. Mike going to drive in with his left hand. Dishes it off. That's going to go out of bounds. And another uh, foot on the baseline for the Trojans as Wagner was trying to feed it into Page.
These teams keeping pace with each other so far as we are halfway through this second quarter. Bringing it up is Massaquai. As Simmons heads to the bench, Massaquai working on Wagner, hands it off to Mason. Mason with his third three-point attempt of the game. That's short. Rebound goes to Whitlow. Mitchell pushing the pace, dishes it off to Wagner. Wagner off to Dale. Fred puts it on the floor, and that's going to be a charge going against Fred Dale. So Weiss with it the other way. They trail by two. This is their chance to take the lead. If Mason hit that last three, they would have it already. But here's Penson bringing the ball up the court slowly. They get it to Massaquai on the left wing. Wagner defending. They're trying to face it up for Jackson. Dale's trying to get in front of him. Someone lost a shoe. And now they get it inside to Wybrew. Whitlow is throwing the shoe out of bounds as Jackson, just taller than everybody, gets the rebound, throws it up, can't get it to fall. And then this is going to be a foul going the other way. I believe it's going to be called against Wybrew. That will. He got a push off underneath the basket as it was Page to lose the shoe. Anderson lucky there. Mitchell uh, stepped out of the play to throw the shoe out of bounds. And when he did that, Wybrew stepped into the dunker spot. But now, Whitlow back to the bench. It's Blackerby in. Dale as well with Page along with Francis and Wagner. So Anderson with some substitutions. Weiss sticking with the same group. Wybrew got a hand on that. Jack gets it back. Jack going to drive in, kicks it to the corner for Page. Page sets his feet, drives in, going to go with the floater. That's going to be an air ball, rebound to Wybrew. Now here comes Massaquai with his head up. No numbers here as Anderson got back defensively. Massaquai out on the perimeter. On the right side, they're still trying to get it into Jackson. Double comes, and now a kick outside is stolen by Wagner. Mike pushing the pace. He's going to outrun people. Euro step to the basket, and that's got to be a goaltend. No call, as now it's going to be Weiss ball and a foul against Francis. That ball definitely hit the backboard before it was blocked. That ball definitely hit the backboard before it was blocked. They're saying it was still on the way up, but I'm pretty sure that's not the rule. I'm pretty sure it's, it's about, if it touches the backboard, it doesn't matter if it's still going up. As we will turn down the crowd mic, if that gives you any indicator what the Anderson students uh, feel about that one. But no time. <laughs> as that's our first controversy of the game as here's Jackson with it outside. Wybrew out on the perimeter. They get it inside to Jackson. Jackson just going to go up above Anderson players and knock it in again. That is six points for Cameron Jackson that are entirely because he's taller than everybody. I'm not knocking it. It's just <laughs> that's what Anderson's up against right now. Whitlow left wide open in the corner. He'll stretch the floor. Can't get his second three of the game, and the rebound goes to Massaquai. He's pushing. He's got four on two, so... All the way, and Blackerby going to block that out of bounds. Massaquai did not have the numbers. It will stay here. We've got a tie game, 16 apiece, with 2.10 remaining in the first half. Getting ready to throw the ball in is going to be Jarmaine Mason. Looking to get it into Jackson. He's not there. That's got to be three seconds on Jackson. No. Now they get it back outside for Penson. Penson around the perimeter along with Massaquai. He's on the left side. He's going to kill his dribble, gets it into Jackson. Now Jackson doubled out there in the corner. Dishes it inside to Wybrew, loses it, and it's stolen away. Mitchell Whitlow clears it. He comes into the front court. Mitchell drives in, slips the defender, can't get it. Langley's there on the follow to get the deuce. Nate Langley, a quiet first quarter, gets his first basket of the game. He has two. We're under two minutes to play in the half. Anderson has the lead back. It's 18 to 16. Now here's Penson. Gets it for Massaquai. Now back for Jackson, out on the perimeter. That's where they want him. Now here's Wybrew, and that's going to be illegal an, an illegal screen, excuse me. They're going to get Penson for it, so it'll be Trojan basketball. A minute 29 left in half number one. Five team fouls apiece, so everyone with, uh, with one more to give. Well, they'll get Wybrew out of the game, and they'll get Lorenzo Diggs back in it. So Anderson with a two-point lead. Wagner bringing the ball up for the Trojans. He gets it off to Francis. Diggs coming up to defend Jack, and Jack's going to throw it away, but it's into the hands of Blackaby. It's going to go out of bounds again, and finally off of Weiss. That ball was batted into the air. It was Bedlam over there on the sidelines, but now it will be Trojan basketball with a minute 19 to play here in quarter number two. Simmons getting ready to check back in for Pence. So here's Wagner to inbound it. No resistance on that. They get it to Francis. Jack going to drive in, splits the double team. Jack... Looked like he took a bump, but he lost it. Now here comes Diggs right at Langley. Diggs gets the deuce. So Lorenzo Diggs with his first make of the game. He ties the game back up. Anderson uh, still turning the ball over a little too much. 
It's giving Weiss some easy opportunities. This here's Francis doubled on the right side. Back to Francis or back to Whitlow, back to Langley. Nate loses it out of bounds, but it was off of the hands of Simmons. So it stays here. It'll be under the basket for the Trojans with under a minute to play here in the opening half. We've got a good one here at Rouse. Wagner looking for somewhere to go with it. Just finds Francis in the corner. He's going to pull into it. That's going to be too long. Ball high. Rebound goes inside to Diggs, and it's kicked out of bounds off of the foot of Blackerby Bennett. Just missing that one. So now Weiss with a chance to take the lead with any points here. They'll get Massaquai out of the game, and they'll get Corey Penson back into the game. Corey has two. Now they're going to get Colin Page back in it for defense, and they're going to get Whitlow out of the game. Mitchell still with just those two fouls. As both of these teams have traveled out to Leander for this one. Of course, not too far. Weiss out in Pflugerville. Anderson out in Austin. So here are the Wolves bringing it around the perimeter. It looks like they'll hold for the final shot. It's Penson. Now under 30 to play, he gets it back to Simmons. Simmons scoreless so far. Penson, the only uh, member of that backcourt that has scored today between Massaquai, Penson, and Simmons. Mason has six. He's more of a forward, but now we have 15 seconds left. Weiss still holding the ball. Anderson letting him. So Weiss will either have the lead or a tie, it looks like. Simmons back outside. Penson drives back to the middle of the court, gets around Wagner. He'll pull up. Floater off the glass is no good. Goes to uh, Wagner, and that's how the half ends. Anderson didn't have a chance to get down the court and get a shot off. So we are tied at halftime. And if you like good basketball, then we've had a good game for you here. Eight or excuse me, you're going to be 10 minutes of halftime as the Trojans and the Wolves both head to their respective locker rooms. Let's take you through some scoring totals. Cameron Jackson and Jarmaine Mason uh, doing the bulk of the work for the Wolves. They both got six. Wybrew, Diggs, and Penson all have two for the Wolves. And for the Anderson Trojans, Bennett Blackaby hit two threes in the first quarter. Hasn't scored since. He has six. Mitchell Whitlow, Colin Page both with three. Francis Wagner and Langley with two. So that senior big three of the Trojans only combining for six points at the half. Going to need a little bit more from them in the second. And that's kind of been the uh, the trend is, is some slow starts for the Trojans that they start to pick up. But that first quarter they came out with blistering speed. Scoring coming way down there in quarter number two. But with ten minutes up on the clock, we're going to go ahead and send it to halftime. We'd like to thank you for tuning in. And before we do, I just got, uh, I got one thing. And that is a little ad read for boys basketball. Don't miss the boys UIL Basketball State Championships starting March 10th. That's a Thursday at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. That is UILTexas.org. And now it's officially halftime. Going to go ahead and take our break. Trojans have it all tied up with the wool. I never was great. But playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. What does the 50th anniversary of Title IX mean? It means I'm valued. I'm empowered. I can do anything. It means I'll pave the way for every girl who plays high school sports in the future. Just like every female student, coach, official, and administrator blaze the trail for me because every student deserves the opportunity to play. Encourage girls you know to participate in Texas high school sports. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. 
Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipe.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Halftime for Rouse. 
We've got a tie game at the break, 18 apiece between these two teams, looking very evenly matched. Anderson getting some shots to fall to keep them uh, in front for most of this game. Weiss has, uh, has not, of course, trailed by too much, but Anderson caught out to a pretty good lead there in the first quarter, and then the shot started falling for Weiss. They started feeding it to Cameron Jackson a whole lot more. He tallied six in the first half, and if Anderson wants to come out of here with the win, uh, they've got to do their absolute best to to just not let Cameron Jackson get the ball on the block as basically his game plan is to get it on the block and just shoot it over an Anderson defender like they were a parking cone and that absolutely works he's got about five inches on everybody on this Trojan roster even Langley uh, is much much smaller than him although he wasn't he's not too big to begin with but now Trojans back out onto the court it is their Starting five, back out onto the court, of course. Mitchell Whitlow, Jack Francis, Bennett Blackaby, Mike Wagner, and Nate Langley all take the court. Now the Wolves getting ready to break their huddle as well. Massaquai, Mason, Penson, Wybrew, and Jackson. That is their starting lineup, and that's the five that they are running with to get the game going once again and now Weiss with the possession arrow so it will be a Wolves ball to get it started. Titus Massaquai getting ready to inbound it. When we are underway coming up the left side is Penson. He dishes it off immediately to Mason. Francis picking him up on the left wing. He's right in front of the Wolf bench. Now back out for Wybrew. Here's Massaquai with it now into the right side for Penson. They are trying to get it into Jackson and Anderson doing a good job of fronting and just ball denying. Now they dish it in for Wybrew. Whitlow has him faced up. Now Wybrew going to go right at Mitchell. Turns, throws it up, and knocks it in. So Weiss has two players that are taller than everybody on the Trojans team, and they are using that to their advantage. Now here's Whitlow going to catch and shoot above the break. Can't get it to go, so he's one for three after making his first. Now back outside for Mason. Here come the Wolves taking an early lead here in this third quarter. The third quarter in the regular season for the Trojans was their best, but now here in the postseason it has been their worst. Weiss already taking the lead back. It's 20-18. to 18. Back out on the perimeter with is Massaquai. Massaquai to the right. Kicks it back out for Jackson. Now here's Penson to reset the offense. Now Mason on the left wing. Wagner defending him. They get it back for Wybrew. Four points in the game for Tyson Wybrew. Now Jermaine Mason... Had two threes in the first half. They get it to Jackson. Now back for Mason. He's going to step into a triple. Can't knock that one down. Langley there on the board for the Trojans. Here comes Anderson. Mike Wagner going to slow it down. Now back for Jack Francis. Jack going to put it on the floor. And he steps it back. Now back out for Mike Wagner. Six and a half to play here in the third. Anderson working it around the perimeter. Francis with it now. Double coming. They get it back to Wagner. Now got to be careful as now it's an open triple for Blackerby. That's good. Bennett Blackerby opens the scoring for the Trojans. That's his third triple of the night, and he gives them the lead right back. 21-18 after the triple from Blackerby. 6-15 remain here in the third quarter. Corey Penson with the ball for Weiss now. Massacoy dribbling around the perimeter, back out. Kicks it to Penson on the right wing, hands it off to Wybrew. Tried to get it right back to Penson, but he'll dance out on the perimeter. Now it's Jermaine Mason. Mason hands it off to Penson. Penson going to try and get around Blackerby, but Bennett cuts him off. Now Bennett coming up playing aggressive. Excuse me. Penson drives in, and that's blocked by Blackerby, and they're going to get Bennett for the foul. That looked like good defense all around for Bennett Blackerby, but he's still going to pick up a foul on the on the bailout from the officials. Corey Penson was falling away from the basket. Uh, not a good shot, but they're going to get Blackerby on the whistle. So now Penson steps to the line for two. Haven't had very many free throws in this game. Here's his first, and that's good. And we've got 21 apiece as Penson steps to the line for one more. Four now in the game for Penson. Wagner going to slow it down for the Trojans. One point lead for the Wolves. Under six minutes to play here in the third quarter. Whitlow gets it to Langley. Now back for Wagner. He's going to step into a three. That's going to be in and out. Tough make. As now going up high to get it is Jackson and Langley just didn't have a chance. Now back for Mason. And here come the Weiss Wolves. Massacoy going to hold on to it on the perimeter for a little bit. Getting some orders from his coach. Now here's Massacoy. Going to try and go in at Francis. Got downhill. Gets all the way to the cup. Lays it up. Lays it in. 
Not a lot of resistance there from Jack Francis as Massaquai gets his first make of the game. Weiss now with a three-point lead. Francis driving in, kicks it to Blackaby in the corner. Back for Whitlow, loses it going to the basket. Dumps it off to Langley. Nate's shot rejected right into the hands of Wagner. And now Mike taking it in. Can't get it to go. And that's Jackson once again making it difficult for the Trojans inside as they can't get anything on the big man. Kind of how we went against New Caney at a 6-7 forward. As now here's Jackson driving in, going to take it right at Langley. That's off the side of the backboard, but he's just taller and gets his own board. Throws it up, can't get it. Now ball on the floor. He dives, and that's got to be a foul, just diving on Whitlow's back. They'll finally get Jackson for one. So now we move the other way. The Trojans trail it by three. It's been close most of the game, but the Trojans have also had the lead for most of the game. Now four and a half to play here in the third quarter. Jack Francis with the ball. Now they get it for Wagner. Back to Francis. Francis up ahead to Whitlow. Mitchell had a three for a moment. Not going to take it. Now back for Wagner. Wagner looking inside. He'll drive it himself. Now a push shot. Can't get it to go. Wagner still only with one make in the game. And I'm thinking about I don't know if Anderson has shot a free throw here today. Now here's Penson. One team foul apiece. Weiss with the three-point lead. They get it to Massaquai. Now back for Mason, and that's going to be a travel. He didn't set his feet before he took off. So Anderson gets a stop they need, and now with four minutes and nine seconds in the third, they'll have it back. Wagner bringing it up. Same start to the possession. They get it to Francis. Now the tap court trap comes. They get it back to Wagner. Now Mike draws the double team. He kills his dribble. Now he'll just have to get it back to number five, Jack Francis. Jack going to drive in, splits the double, takes a bump from Wybrew. Francis can't get a whistle here to get it back to uh, Whitlow on the offensive rebound from Langley. Now here's Ben Blackaby going to put it on the floor, crosses over on Massaquai, drives to the cup. He's going to take a bump, and this will be a foul on the floor, so Anderson will retain possession. That's the second team foul going against Weiss in this half. It's going to go against Titus Massaquai. Now here's Wagner trying to inbound it, gets it off to Langley. Nate going to put one dribble, gets to the basket, goes up against two taller defenders, misses, but he gets his own board, and then he takes the block and he bats it away, but right into the hands of Wybrew. So Anderson really uh, can't get much inside with these two twin towers packing the paint. That's solid defense inside from Weiss all night. Defending without fouling as here's Penson. Ooh, almost got away with, a, with another walk there as here's Mason. With Blackaby defending, Mason going to drive in, brings the ball up high, throws that out of bounds off of the backboard. And Anderson will retain possession. They get the stop there. Now three minutes left to play here in the third. Four-point game. Anderson going on a little bit of a scoring drought here. So once again, back across to Francis. Got to look to get Blackaby more involved in the offense. As here's Langley posting up. Kicks it back for Jack. Jack going to put one dribble in, go all the way to the cup, lays it up, gets it to roll. Jack Francis over two big guys, gets his second make of the game. He has four. 2.45 left. Anderson trims it to a one-point lead, and we will have a timeout for Weiss. The Wolves call a timeout with a one-point lead, 2.45 left here in the third quarter. We're going to go ahead and take a break with them. We'll be right back. Bite Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at Bite, Bite is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to Bite, B-Y-P-E dot com. Okie doke. Back in out of the timeout. It will be Wolf basketball. Off the make from Jack Francis. 24-23. Weiss with the lead. Colin Page getting checked in. That's the first substitution of the half for the Trojans. Now he'll trap Massaquai. He just has to get it into Wybrew. Wybrew getting downhill. Loses it. Now Blackerby dives to the floor to stop it. Anderson now coming the other way. They've got a three on two. Wagner off to Page. Page is going to take it up, and that's going to be packed into the stands by Tyson Wybrew. Again, I'm always an advocate for 
I'm always fine with getting my shot blocked because it goes out of bounds, and then it's still my ball. So Anderson will take that. Could have easily been a turnover as here's Wagner getting it into Bennett Blackerby. But a beautiful block. Wybrew just timed it up perfectly and sent that one flying, but it will not deter Colin Page, I don't imagine. As here's Mike Wagner going to drive it baseline. Dishes it to Langley. Through the legs! He just put the ball through Wybrew's legs! Anderson gets the lead back as Nate Langley gets his second make of the game. He's got four. Now two minutes to play left in the third quarter off the highlight play for the Anderson Trojans. Back out for Massaquai. Now Tyson with it. Massaquai kicks it to the corner. That's Mason. Double team comes. Pass a little high, but digs there to get it. Now skip across. Here's Penson left wide open for three. Can't knock it down. Rebound goes high. It's batted in the air and into the hands of Weiss. Now Massaquai driving in. Gets all the way to the cup. Off balance leader is good. So now Trojans with the ball. Wagner bringing the ball up slowly. Under a minute and a half left here in the quarter. 120 to play. Diggs defending. Gets it off to Francis. Now Jack around the perimeter. And Francis will reset. Now 115 left to play. Weiss with a one-point lead. Francis back to Wagner. Wagner looked at the three. Won't take it. Now here's Langley. He's left open. He can stretch it from the corner. And he does. Nate Langley from downtown. He's got seven. And Weiss. Or no, excuse me. Anderson going to go ahead and burn the timeout. Either way, we've got a timeout on the floor. Anderson has the lead back. They lead it by two. 28-26. Off the corner triple from the big man. Starting to heat up. Now a minute and three seconds remain here in quarter number three. We have a full timeout, so we'll go ahead and take the break with them. We'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. We've got Anderson playoff basketball, some UIL quarterfinals here. They lead it by two. We'll be right back. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. A little water break. I need it too. But now, Weiss with it. They bring the ball up. Now Massaquai all the way to the cup. Takes a hit from Langley. Gets it to go. Titus Massaquai, scoreless in the first half, has three here in the third or excuse me, six here, three makes. And now that ties the game back up. 44 seconds left here in the third. Here comes Mike Wagner. Anderson going to slow it down. Back to Jack Francis in front of Coach Pitt and the Trojan bench. Here's Wagner. Into the high post for Nate. Now back out for Wagner. Of course, just wasting clock here, so any, any pass is just to, to keep the ball moving and to, re to get rid of that five-second counter. As here's Wagner going to put it on the floor. Back out for Francis. Under 20 to play now in the third. Massaquoi really reaching in there. They're going to get him on one of these. Now they get it up top for Langley. Langley fakes the handoff. Now gets it back to Wagner. Under 10 to play. Mike going to put it on the floor. Seven seconds now. Still nothing from Anderson. Here's Wagner dribbling around. Takes it. Wagner loses it into the air. Here's Edwards. And Massaquoi going to get a half-court heave off. <laughs> Very nearly banked that in. Would have sent this place into a frenzy. But once again, we have a tie game after the quarter. These teams even... After three, they were tied at half, and now they're tied at the end of the third. We've got an exciting finish for you coming up here in a little bit. But, having some issues with some programs. So we'll go ahead and keep it here. Okay, never mind. Now we got it. Well, yeah, we'll still keep it here. Just a 60-second break in between quarters, of course. I wonder how that works on TV, because there's you got to have ads, but there's no official TV timeouts. But whatever. Got the KXAN uh, crew in. Roger Wallace and the gang. Absolutely 
Big time me. <laughs> Pre-game. Um, but now 28-28. Six, uh, three players with six points. Massaquai, Mason, and Jackson for the Wolves. Anderson didn't let Jackson touch the ball a whole lot in that third quarter. That was absolutely all part of the game plan. Bennett Black would be nine points. Seven for Nate Langley. Neither team deserves to have their season end here. But this is the, uh, well, depending on how you look at it, this is the round of 16 before the state tournament, uh, but the round of 32, if you're counting every 5A team that's remaining and playing basketball. Here's the handoff to Francis as the Trojans start it. Wagner drives baseline, kicks it to Langley behind the back. What a feed. Nate going to drive in, kill his dribble, zips it across for Whitlow. Now back to Francis. Now Wagner going to put it on the floor, drives it in. Floater is no good. Mike looking for a shot a little bit more, but he hasn't been able to hit. Now here's Penson running the floor for the Wolves. And he'll pull it back. Seven and a half to play here in the final game of the season for one of these two teams. Now back for Mason. Six points of the game for him. All in the first half. They get it back to Wybrew. He's going to try and stretch it. And he does. Tyson Wybrew from downtown. He's got seven points. And Weiss with a three-point lead to start the third quarter. Anderson has been in this quarterfinal round three years in a row now. They haven't been able to get past it. Now here's Wagner going to drive into the paint. Dishes it to Langley. Nate hesitated. Gets the layup to fall anyway. So with that, the lead back down to one for the Wolves as they have the ball back. It's Penson bringing it up. 31 to 30. Massaquai with it. Francis tried to cut that off, but they'll just have to switch it. Mason with it now back outside for Massaquai. He's taking his time out there on the perimeter, wasting some of that clock. Six and a half to play now. Here's Massacoy driving right at Francis. They get it back to Mason. He'll come around the perimeter, back to Wybrew. Anderson doing a good job cutting him off. Now Blackerby comes up to defend Mason. They're trying to get it into Jackson. They do. He's going to take it right into Langley. Double comes. They have to get it back outside. Wybrew going to try another three. Can't get that one to fall. Rebound chased down by Francis. Jack going to push it. Now slows it down. That's the smart play. He had a three on two. Or rather, a two on three. He did not have the numbers. Now back to Francis. He's going to step into a triple. That's no good. Rebound goes long to Penson. And coming the other way, Jack Francis, only four points here tonight. Had 13 against New Caney. Now six minutes to play. Wolves with it driving on the left side is Penson. Got free. Now back for Mason. Mason going to go in at Francis. And that's going to be a push off against Mason. Jack took the hit to the chest. Probably sold that one a little bit, but Jermaine Mason going to pick up the offensive foul, and Anderson going to take possession once again, trailing by just one. 5.51 to play. Winner here will go on to play the winner of Goose Creek and Beaumont United, the reigning state champs. As here's Whitlow driving in, got free, a little too strong off the glass. That was a great look at the basket, but he given them the lead, but Jackson's there on the board, and here comes Massacoy. Five and a half to play left. Wolves still with a one-point lead. They're trying to get it into Jackson. Langley doing everything he can to just stay in front. Now here comes the double. Swing to the corner. Now Mason left open. He'll try again from three. That's good. Big shot for Jermaine Mason. He has nine points. Puts the Weiss lead up to four with five minutes to play. Been a low-scoring affair, as it is in any playoff game. As here's Blackaby catches the handoff from Wagner. Now we'll have a push on Wybrew away from the ball. Refs really uh, letting them play here today. I think we have less than, I think we might have two free throws total in this game. As here's Black could be catching in the corner. He rises up, can't get it to go, just a bit short. As there's Mason, he's doubled, but he gets away with it to Massacoy. Now Massacoy going to run up the floor. He'll slow it down. Now runs through, back out for Wybrew, gets it to Penson. Penson back to Massacoy. He drives in, bumps Whitlow, gets it to go, and one. So Titus Massaquai gets it to go, puts the lead back to six, and now the officials giving the Wolves some free throws. Anderson needs some offense. You got to have someone step up and hit the big shot. As Massaquai all of a sudden has a team high along with Jermaine Mason of nine. Seven point lead, the largest of the game for the Wolves here in the fourth quarter. Both of these teams came to play here tonight. As Wagner takes the bump, and that's going to be an illegal screen against Langley. Officials picked a, picked a heck of a time to start calling, uh, 
things as this has been a very physical game all day. As they're going to get Page in for Whitlow. They need the stop. Four minutes and a half to play. As now coming up with it is Mason. Back for Penson. Anderson coming with a light double team. Now back outside. And we have a timeout going against, uh, going for Weiss, excuse me. Coach was not happy with the, the press break that his team was showing. But Weiss with a seven-point lead, four and a half to play. It's do or die time now for the Anderson Trojans. We got a full timeout. You know what that means. We'll go ahead and take it with them. We'll be back in just about 30 seconds. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Back in it, seven point lead for the Wolves. Weiss has the ball. Back to back possessions. Mitchell Whitlow was whistled for a foul and then Nate Langley whistled for the illegal screen. I believe Anderson has yet to shoot a free throw here tonight. Here's Massaquai, back out for Penson on the right side, double comes, Francis gets the takeaway, the ball is still loose, Page able to recover it, Page off to Langley, now Nate driving in, has it taken away by Massaquai, Titus Massaquai has put his mark on this game, lays it up, gets it to go, Titus Massaquai taking this game over, Weiss has a 9 point lead with 4 to go, 11 second half points for Titus, as he was absolutely a non-factor in the first 2 quarters, now here's Blackaby going to drive it in, back for Wagner, they need this, Wagner can't hit, rebound high, Jackson takes it away, and Anderson running out of time. Now here's Penson, defended by Page, and they're going to get Colin on the foul. Now ready to inbound it is Corey Penson, Anderson, going to need to pitch a shutout here. Benson trapped, takes the double, throws it in, gets it into Wybrew, ball's loose, Wagner takes it away. So in life for the Trojans, Wagner into the front court, hands it off to Page, no spacing. Wagner back with it, Francis wide open in the corner, but he'll drive in after attacking the closeout. Page on the push shot, that's no good, Anderson can't hit anything on this end, because this is going to be a foul going against Jack Francis. Frustration setting in for the Trojans. Looks like Weiss might be going to take on, I assume, Beaumont United, a team with three All-State Tournament players returning to the team after their state title last year. So they are an absolute juggernaut. Now back for Massaquai. Up ahead, here's Mason. Back to Massaquai. 11 points in the game for him now. Here's Penson driving in. Back inside the Wybrew. He takes a hit going up. And some more free throws coming for the Wolves. Three minutes to play. Weiss on the verge of putting it up double figures. And the way Anderson's been scoring, that might do it. Clybrew to the line. His first free throw attempt is good. Got to get some threes up. Wybrew back to the line for one more. Makes them both. So Anderson blanked at the line today. Weiss, perfect from the line. Actually, no, no. Anderson has two free throws. Colin Page, Colin Page shot two. He went one for two. Here's Jack Francis. Good defense out on him. Black going to catch it. Ooh, got away with a travel there. Lucky for Anderson to keep the possession alive. Wagner steps into it, into Langley. Nate takes the bump, and he's going to be sent into the stands again by Wybrew. But once again, Anderson will have the ball once again. 
11 point lead under three to play for Weiss. Now here's Wagner looking to get it in somewhere. Just has to fire it into Francis. Francis clears it and will have possession. 2.40 left. Jack going to step into a triple. They need this bad. Off the front end, Langley high for it, and that's going to be out of bounds off of Mason. It looked like it was off of Langley. So we'll stay here. Anderson has a couple shots at this. That's been the story. They, uh, they just haven't been able to make shots today after that first quarter. They've had some good looks at the basket all game, but they just haven't uh, fallen for Anderson. As Jack loses it, gets it back, now stuck with it, and it's going to be a foul going against Weiss. And I don't think they had any to give. No, they, they excuse me, that, that's Anderson without fouls to give. So now 229, it will be another side out for the Anderson Trojans. Or excuse me, baseline out. Looking for Francis. Now Wagner, looking for Langley, Dip, dips it off to Langley. Nate takes a bump. Can't get it to go. Jackson influenced that one. Here's Massaquai again. It's poked away by Wagner, but right back to Massaquai. Here's Whitlow. Gets the defense. Forces a pence and miss. Now Anderson with it. Wagner took a bump in the back. No call. Now Wagner going to drive into the lane. He'll clear through. 2.13 to go. Wagner is stuck in the corner. Back to Langley. Nate puts it on the floor. Skips across for Francis. Jack going to drive in. Step back into the corner for three. That's no good. Rebound Whitlow. Excuse me, that was Langley, and now here's Jackson, and it looks like Weiss is going to come away with the victory. Here's Wybru. Misses the dunk on the other end, but they're going to get a foul on Wagner. As Weiss has really latched on to the one Anderson chant. <laughs> Mix it up, guys. Come on. You're about to get a you're about to go to the semis. Need a little more creativity than that, right? But Wybrew makes the first. He's been perfect from the line. Trojans out of fouls to give, and now with two minutes, they trail it by 12. That one rattles in. So if this is the end of the road for the Trojans, they've put together a heck of a run. It will be... Not sure if it's full or half. It will be a full timeout, but we'll just keep it here for the duration. Titus Massacoy and Tyson Weibrew have been killers for Anderson tonight, both with 11. Anderson only 30 points. That would definitely be a season low. Lowest on the season is a 32-point game. No, excuse me, that's not true. So far, I'm, I'm thinking 37 is their season long. Yep. 63, actually. So, uh, and the loss to Round Rock. Well, in the win against Brennan, they had 52. In the loss against uh, Westwood, they had 46. So I think right now, 37 is their season low and a loss against Bel Air uh, in the tournament. That was just their fourth game of the season. So they still need seven to match that, but of course, I don't think they're too concerned with that right now as they're under two to play and Anderson trails it by 13. Wagner races up the court for the Trojans. They need shots and they need them quick. As here's Langley going to drive it into the paint, gets it back to Francis. Francis left open from the corner. Jack can't get it to go. It's just been a cold night for Jack Francis. But Anderson gets the ball back. Blackaby on the steal. Bennett going to drive in, pull up himself. Can't get that to go either. Man, Anderson just, uh, they can't make anything right now. And in order to win games, you need to make shots. But Francis there to take it away. And now diving at the legs, it's going to be a foul against Weiss. So Anderson still technically alive. They trail it by three with just 90 seconds but doing a good job of, uh, of forcing the steals and getting the ball back. They just can't hit anything right now. They scored two points in this entire fourth quarter up to this point. And, uh, of course, that's, that's, that's not going to be enough for you. Is Langley with it taking, taking up a little too much time as here's Blackaby driving in. Just tries to get the foul, but he can't. But Francis on the rebound takes a big block from Jackson, and now we are... Just about under a minute to play. Here's Wagner going to pull up on the floater. Finally gets one to go. So the Wolves with an 
with an 11-point lead, one minute to play. Looks like they're going to come out of here with the win, and they're going to go back to Pflugerville. Trojans will go back to North Austin. Back out onto the court. They've got Whitlow out and Colin Page back in. Forty-three, thirty-two. Weiss with the lead. Weiss with the ball. And now Weiss on the inbound. Looking for somewhere to go with it. They just no. They throw it away. Anderson has it. So still some life. Pass off. Here's Francis from downtown. Gets it to go. Zach Francis keeping the Trojans' hopes alive. They still trail it by eight with under a minute to play. Weiss trying to get it in. They get it into the big man Jackson. And now Anderson fouls the big guy. They'll send him to the line. It'll just be a one and one. So now they're going to force the big man to make some shots. Anderson needed a little bit more heat a little earlier in the quarter, but this game is far from over. 51 seconds. Trojans trail by eight. But Cameron Jackson, the big man with a chance to put it away from the free throw line, get it back to a 10-point game on the front end. Jackson's first foul shot is no good, but Wybrew is there on the board. Wybrew takes the hit, gets it to go. Anderson just has no answer for their size, and that'll be the dagger. Here's Jack Francis crossing over, dishes it off to Blackerby. Bennett takes a hit, no call, zips it out for Wagner. Wagner driving in, takes a hit, lays it up, can't get it to go. An acrobatic shot, Jackson there to clear it away. Mason tries to throw it in to Jackson. Jackson has it, Mason has it, and now Anderson's going to have to start fouling. Now some dejected faces on the Anderson sideline. As they got what they wanted, they just couldn't box out the literally the only Weiss player down on that end. And Wybrew got it. Took an ill-advised shot, but he got it to fall. First free throw. No good. So a 10-point game with 30 seconds. Jack Francis racing up the court. Crosses over. He pulls it back into the corner. Driving in. Now back outside. It's tapped away by Jackson. And that will likely do it. So Weiss going to come away with the win here. Going on to play the winner of Goose Creek and Beaumont United. I imagine that Beaumont will be the team that will uh, be all the way down in San Antonio. Anderson coming out of the game where they only shot two free throws. Weiss going to pick up the win here. First free throw up and good from Wybrew. He's been perfect at the line, and that's a, that's a player you love to have. Anderson going to give these seniors a chance for a standing ovation as Jack Francis heads to the bench after an end to an incredible, incredible career of basketball for the number five. A thousand point score in his career, defensive player of the year. As now Langley also getting a standing ovation, they'll give one to Wagner too. Absolutely, everybody, every senior on the Sanderson team deserves it as they are now flooding the bench and getting some of these seniors in for one last, uh, one last round. Ben Bazarian out onto the court, a senior. Corey Price out onto the court, a senior. Kalen Hull, senior. Andrew Alexander, and of course, Derek Armour. So Wybrew goes two for two. And Anderson gets it to Alexander. Alexander going to step back for three. That's good! Andrew Alexander from downtown <laughs> to make this one seem a little nicer. And just when you, when you, when you thought it was going to go out sad, Andrew Alexander comes in and does that. <laughs> so we have a, a full timeout. Just going to go ahead and keep it here, kind of wrap things up. But uh, absolutely no reason to hang your heads. Of course, you want the win here, and I think this was an attainable game and a winnable one for the Anderson Trojans, but that's not always how it goes. Incredible seasons from Jack Francis, Mike Wagner, Nate Langley. Bennett Blackaby really came into his own. He really became a dependable uh, player on this team, I imagine. 
that he will have the keys next season to the offense. He and Mitchell Whitlow as Anderson steps back into 5A. Liam Donahoe back out onto the court as well as Armour will get a rest. 38 to 47. Anderson trails it by nine. It's Weiss basketball. And they do get it in. Alexander defending Anderson. Going to press to the final seconds. I think Weiss does actually have to get this across. Here comes Mason. And they will hold on to it. And that's how it will end. Weiss gets the victory here at Rouse High School. Anderson had a shot at it. Just couldn't hit the shots when it counted. The Wolves move on to take on the winner of Goose Creek and Beaumont United. And now that this game's over, uh, I, I feel comfortable saying eh, nobody's beating Beaumont United. Um, I didn't want to 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 be negative if Anderson still had a shot, but that Beaumont United team is freaking insane. I mean, <laughs> they are so good. Uh, but I think Anderson uh, really made the most. They, I think they uh, they proved their ranking as one of the top 25 teams at the 5A level. Weiss just coming out, playing better. Massaquai, Tyson Wybrew, both huge, huge parts of this Weiss win. But now the Wolves will head back to Pflugerville. Anderson will head home for the season. And it's the end of the road for, uh, for this crew and for these seniors. As Anderson moves up back to 6A next year, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be a whole new look for Anderson basketball. As these guys move on, either to, to continue playing at the next level, if you're Colin Page, you're going to join the most talented running back room in college football. Uh, Colin, of course, being the most talented in that room. <laughs> um, but hate to see it end that way. Well, hate to see it end anyway. Um, after you have such a great season, you never want it to end with a loss, but, but, it, but it has to. Uh, back next season for Anderson, Mitchell Whitlow, Jackson Gill, Bennett Blackerby. I look forward to, to following what he does next season. Campbell Duncan and Fred Dale if he continues uh, on in his basketball career, but he's got plenty of laurels to rest on for football. But that'll do it for us. Final score from Rouse High School in Leander. Weiss, 47. Anderson, 38. And I just want to... Uh, as the season ends, I want to uh, thank all the folks at Anderson High School, Coach Pittsford, uh, Mr. Francis, just all the parents, uh, so many kind words throughout the years. So I just want to <laughs> say the right things, you know. But I had a blast all these past three years. The first playoff run with Max Smith. The, the entirety of the COVID season last year and now being able to do every game this season. I don't think I missed one. Oh, um, I think I only missed some of those tournament games. Uh, I was here for all of these. But this is a really easy team to root for. It's a really easy team to fall in love with. Just the way that they play.